Alrighty, this is take two of our uh, quick demo of this compound and um, forklift traction motor. Take one was unsuccessful uh, due to a crappy uh, camcorder battery. So, some quick emergency engineering. We have uh, adapted this battery here uh, with some high quality cables here uh, to power up the camcorder. So, fingers crossed this will do the trick and uh, I can actually film this thing. Okay, so what we have here <coughs> is uh, essentially a forklift traction motor. Uh, it came out of a um, Hitsubishi forklift. Let's try to get this here without a glare on it. There we go. And uh, you can see the basic specifications there on it. Um, <coughs> in its uh, forklift applications it is going to be powered from 72 to 80 volts DC. So I hope to be able to increase that a bit for the, for the car. Okay, so just, so just a quick um, quick explanation of the test that we're going to do. Uh, <coughs> this is essentially a compound pound DC machine so what that um, means is that it's got two sets of field terminals. Uh, the first set is high current stuff. It's this terminal here and the one down here and uh, this is designated S1 and S2. This is the series field and up front here these two smaller um, terminals here F1 and F2. These are the shunt field uh, connections and on the back here we have A1 armature and let's take that crop clip off there we have A2 in there okay so those are our armature terminals now, <coughs> essentially, uh, what I want to try to demonstrate today here um, is the shaft speed against field, field strength. Uh, so what we have, we have two power sources. Uh, the first one here is a just a standard 12 volt car battery, and then I have three smaller. Uh, 12 volt uh, gel batteries here. They're hooked up in series to give us 36 volts total. Going to hook up. Um, going to hook up one end of our shunt field here, and uh, just leave the other end uh, disconnected for the minute. So the first basic power up that we can do here. Um, it's just to connect it as a normal series machine. So if I connect up the battery here, uh, we'll see something happen. I'm trying to get that terminal to stay on. And we can see there that the shaft is uh, spinning up happily. Now, if I apply a load to this shaft here, as we can see, I'm trying to be careful, you can see the more that I squeeze it, the slower it gets, but the slower it gets, the more torquey it becomes. And that's the characteristic of a series wound DC machine, that being that the torque is essentially in inversely proportional to speed. So the slower it gets, the more torque it has faster it gets the less torque it, it has. Okay. Now the next uh, thing that we're going to do here is I'm going to start back up again and uh, I'm going to apply 36 volts DC to the shunt field um, via our gel batteries here. Okay. I'll try to do this single handedly here now. So I'm going to connect the uh, series power back up again, 12 volt car battery. 
and then we're spinning away. So now <coughs> I want to observe the shaft speed as I connect the 36 volt DC shunt field. Now as we can see here the shaft speed has just dropped appreciably. Now the characteristics have changed. That is when I apply a load to this motor it tends to maintain its speed because now it is behaving partly as a shunt machine and a shunt machine I'm squeezing the hell out of that now and I can't stop it and if we disconnect the shunt field component our, sh our shaft speed increases again so that is a simple demonstration of the difference um, in torque and, and uh, speed characteristics um, when a motor is run as a series machine or a shunt machine. The, in this case I've got the best of both worlds. <coughs>